G'day, it's Fide Master John Curtis. Today we're looking at the final. Final for the world title between Jan Nepomniachtchi and the great Magnus Carlsen. But to find the winner of this match, what I'm doing is I'm going right back when they were playing in the under, under 12s. That's right, the under 12 European Championship. So I'm going back to October 3rd, 2002, when Jan Nipomniachtchi had the white pieces and they were playing the Alakine defence, the modern Larsen variation. Okay, so interestingly, Maxime Vakia Lagrave, he drew against Jan Nipomniachtchi in the same tournament. So it seems like a few, a few of them were there in the under 12s. Way back in 2002, the same combatants that uh, are figuring and uh, waiting for the results of the uh, 2021 candidates. Anyway, so here we go. We're um, looking at the first game and we're going into the analysis room on chess.com. I've set that up for you. And uh, Jan is white. E4, knight F6. As we said, it's an Alakine's defense. Knight F, in, uh, standard moves, knight F3. Engine saying D4, but knight F3, I play that all the time, can't be too bad. And I usually follow up with D4, uh, same as my old mate Yarn. So there we go. Um, D takes E, and knight takes. And how many times have I had this position? Well, I'm sure lots of other players, including some of you out there, have had the same position. G6 is played. It's a book move. Bishop C4. And as you know, we're aiming at the uh, F7 pawn. But players of this calibre, even the under 12s in the European Championship, they, uh, they don't fall for that sort of crap. So knight C3. So he's building up because he knows you can't take my knight and double my pawns because the bishop takes pawn check, as we know. So bishop E6. Uh, e3, I should, uh, yeah, bishop e6, it's a star move, it's the best move according to the engine, the chess.com engine anyway, and white replies with a star move. Now you think you might be able to take the knight attacking the queen, right? But you can't do that. If the knight takes the knight, right? If the knight takes that, sorry, if the knight takes the knight, this knight takes the knight, the bishop will take the bishop, threatening checkmate, right? And then you, you you can't take the queen because it's certainly checkmate. You'd have double D pawns. So you obviously can't do that move. So what do you do? You get a piece working. Star move. So Carlson gets his pieces working. He knows what he's doing. He's a good player. So again, Jan, he plays queen to, queen to F3. He puts pressure on the uh, pawn on um, F7. And now we have bishop to G Seven. Rook to e1, protecting the, the knight. It was attacked by a bishop and a knight. Now it's protected by the pawn and the castle. And black castles and completes his development. Now looking at the position, both players have got all their minor pieces working. Um, black's a little cramped, so what does he do? Well, he swaps off some pieces. Queen to g3 is played after the castle. Knight takes knight. Pawn takes. Star move. Best move. Knight takes knight. Best move. Queen takes. You're not doubling my pawns, buddy. Bishop takes bishop. Queen takes bishop. And have a look at the bar on the side of the board. Queen d5. And everything is dead level. If anything, uh, the engine tends to prefer black slightly. And I must admit, when I say... Um, to my little grasshoppers, I say, grasshoppers, I say, very important. We look at this position and we say, black's got uh, a bishop and white's got a bishop and both their minor pieces, the bishops, are on black squares. So the pawns should be on white squares, per the, the theory, the end game theory, of which Carlson is a great master, grandmaster of. Anyway. So um, let's have a look at how many pawns Carlson's got on black squares. He's got one, two, three, four. Hello? Well, 
Well, that's not, that's not right. Hold on, one, two, three, four, four pawns on black squares. Oh, no, it's yarn. He's got four pawns on black squares. Oh, so Carlson uh, is uh, uh, slightly better. Carlson slightly better. Okay, that's what I would think. And the engine's reflecting that. Queen to e2. So how does Carlson lose a position like this? With just heavy material on the board and everything. It makes you wonder how he could lose a position like this. After all, if he plays a rook to, to either rook here or rook here, um, he controls the open file as well. How do you lose a position like this? Well, maybe he pushed too hard. We're only surmising. Let's have a look at the game. Let's see what happened. So he played rook to a5 uh, a5 to d8. I would have put the other rook. There's no chance of getting checkmated down here. So what are you cramping your rooks up for, Magnus? Hey, what are you cramping your rooks up for? Doesn't make sense. Anyway, so over he comes. He just plays bishop to g5, and now you're going to worry about your pawn. And of course. White's free to change a rook if he wants to. So queen e3, e6 is played. This is a fantastic move. Fantastic. Because the pawn is protected on e7. And white controls many, many of the white squares. Right? And has pressure on the e-pawn. And the f pawn's not going anywhere. Nothing can be done there without creating long-term weaknesses. So let's see how the game proceeds. Queen to e3. Maybe he's thinking, well, I might uh, my pawns are on the wrong colour. How about I threaten the a pawn? And at the same time, I off changing bishops if I really need to. Not that I want to do that because... Good old Magnus, he's got the open file and he's pretty good when he's got an advantage. So we don't want him to control the open file and run amok. I said, what does Magnus do? Well, Magnus should play a6. I mean, one would think that you'd put, play this move. Let's see what he did. b6. So he puts his pawn on the wrong colour, on the wrong colour square. But I tell my grasshoppers, I say, grasshoppers, you don't put your, your, your pawns on black squares when you've got a black square bishop. Okay. So Magnus has forgot about the end game rules, I think. So, what does uh, Nepo do? He puts his pawn on a white square. Good idea. And uh, creates a bit of space. Rook d5, championship move. Absolute championship move. This is the position you should never, ever, ever, ever lose. Ever, ever, ever. Despite you having your two pawns on stupid black squares and, and you should be punished for that. You should, you should be thrown into the chess prison for making moves like that. As a Russian player once said to me, Every Russian schoolboy knows that you can't do things like that without being punished. You can be sent to Siberia in, in, if you're in the old uh, communist uh, system for making an atrocious move like that. They send you to the salt mines. The work, the salt mines. Anyway, let's see what happens. So Bishop F4. Okay, so White's Bishop looks like a pawn now. So he's lost the plot. And you've got to admire Carlson's position here, apart from his pawn structure down there, A and B files. So queen there, star move. I don't like that move at all. I would have doubled the rooks on the open file, right? Somehow I would have done anything I could to uh, also try to manage some sort of play that would get my pawns off those filthy black squares because I sense doom over there. Queen to e4 is played. So obviously white senses something is going on as well. And in this position, this is the perfect opportunity for, uh, for, uh, for black to play queen takes queen, change queens and maybe just draw. I can't see how um, 
this position is going to be anything much much other than a draw with correct play. But anyway, let's see what happens. He moved away. And he says, no, I like to control the open default. And so you can't, can't argue with that. So C3 is played. And now Black's obviously pushing to get an advantage somehow. He's got the open default. And he says, well, I can sense my pawns are a bit weak on the queen side, but now I've got my queen on d7. So he brings another rook over to the open file, powers up. How can you argue with that sort of logic? You'd say black's position looks impregnable. H3 opens the gate for a uh, king exit, if need be, because he sees all this pressure on the d file. Queen e6, back it goes, thumbs up, excellent move, e6 was best. Okay. And you can't really argue with that, can you? e6 looks best. Queen e2, rook d3, and the bar on the side of the board saying a position's level. So you think, how is he going to, how is he going to find a way to lose it? So we're going back. And we're looking at Magnus, um, the psychology of Magnus, when he was young, right? This is his building blocks, right? The building blocks of Magnus, psych psych psychological game, will either make him a, a world champion again. Uh, he's obviously built on his weaknesses and he, he, he got the coveted world title. But somewhere lurking in the dark recesses of his mind is this loss against Nepomniachtchi. And here it comes. A5. Well, we're looking at pressurize, pressuring these, this pawn structure. And we know that the pawn should not be on black squares. Now, you can't take because we have pawn islands. We have two pawn islands. So if pawn takes pawn, we'd have the two pawn islands, right? One, there'd be a pawn here and a pawn there. And it'd be much, much harder for uh, black to draw. But draw nonetheless, I think, would be expected. Now, b5. He's starting to think, well, maybe I can win this. If I can then just play a pawn here, and then secure my pawns, and with my open file, I'd be winning the game. That's what he's after. Carlson is trying to win. And here it comes, the nail in his coffin. Boom! The, a pawn that's on the right colour square grasshoppers. And now we have a look at the bar on the side of the board, and despite Black's full control of the uh, open D file, we see that uh, positions are only equal because of the uh, bad, bad pawn structure there with that pawn hanging on a7. It could be attacked in the end game. So, okay, c5, best move. I thought it was a bad move, but it was actually a good move according to the engine. Uh, Black, Black's winning now after this move. Queen g4 was the correct move. Queen d5, inaccuracy. Rook on the eight on eight to d5 was best. So in this position, this is the correct move. Okay. Shutting white out from doing anything down the back, because remember, down the back is this little weakness there that uh, uh, Jan Nepomniachtchi's created, and he'll work on that given half a chance. He changes queens. Rook takes, and now, rook here. So now you can possibly see the idea of king to beat uh, g1 earlier on. Anyway, so he's threatening a pawn. So he pushes a pawn, protects it. Still has his open file and says, well, what are you going to do? Well, this bishop e3 looks like a real worry. You can't do it right now because the rook takes e pawn. But surely, if you can get some help, to break into that little area there, that, that little box area of that pawn structure and that, that, that shaky little defence, well, then you might be doing all right. 
So let's have a look. Let's see what he does. King to, to f1. A brings his king into the game. He says, well, the king could be useful at some stage. E6, star move, best move. And now we've got a really interesting go. Um, I, I think rook, rook, rook here should be played. That's what I'm thinking. Let's have a look and see what happens. Bishop there. Rook there. Forced. He forced it. There you go. And now bishop d4. And now he's locked his bishop despite Jan's bishop, despite having his pawns on the wrong colour square, his bishop is sort of configured okay. It's configured okay, right? But this pawn here is a pest. My God, that pawn's a pest. Bishop back. He doesn't want to go pinching pawns or anything. He... Whoa, what happened there? Look at the change in the position there. So one minute it's equal, then king to king to g1, and Magnus is winning, and then a missed win. Rook takes d4 wins. So let's 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 have a look at this again. Rook takes d4 wins. So. He played King G1 now, allowing Rook takes D4 wins. How does it win? Well, the bishop was on their fate. So Rook takes D4. And if Pawn takes, Bishop hits two Rooks. That's it. Rook takes Bishop. Right, you take the Bishop. And then if the Pawn takes, Bishop here attacks this Rook and that Rook. And guess what? The basic rule I tell my grasshoppers, examine all checks and examine all captures. It's not done. Okay, so bishop there, Mr. Win. B3. And now Magnus thinks, well, damn it, I missed a win. Maybe I can get the win anyway. Right? And then he plays, bishop hits rook. And guess what? That's another missed win. Rook takes bishop wins. And he's missed it again. So Magnus has got blindness, chess blindness. He put all these pawns on the right color square. Look at them all. There's two pawns there, three pawns there, and another pawn over here, this one. So, and then he's missed the, all the combinations that come from his beautiful endgame play. So rook back goes to a2. He takes it now. And you think, well, hold on. It's a bit late to take it. This is really chess blindness. So pawn takes rook. And now Magnus thinks, well, but I've got a super plan because I'm Magnus. And he pushes the pawn forwards with the idea of linking up with this pawn and having an impregnable game, impregnable position, and uh, something he can build with. Okay. Magnus is a builder. That's the psychology that he has. He's a builder. But obviously, he can't afford to miss combinations. Right, b4, question mark. Rook c1 was the best move, just attacking the pawn. Bishop to g5. He, the whole idea is to support this pawn if it can run through to a queen. Okay. So he plays rook d1 and protects the pawn that, that is vulnerable. And then he wants to push the pawn straight through. Well, you've got to stop that. So he does. And now bishop to e7, another blunder. That's a blunder. Bishop d2 was best, right? So that would have given, um, you know, like a, a completely different perspective. Uh, now white's winning very easily, whereas let's have a look at bishop d2, bishop d2, and white we've been winning, but not so convincingly, okay? Right, and now it's all over Red Rover. This d5 is a killer because it threatens to go straight through. He takes the pawn, pushes, 
And now, well, you've got to stop d7 because it goes to d8, it's a queen. So he moves back. That's a question mark move because now you just hit the bishop and that's the end of the game. Right, rook d1. Because, rook b1, star move. Because when the bishop moves, rook takes pawn and what uh, white's got to pass pawn and uh, won't be long before the c pawn falls and, and the king comes into the game and with this pawn down here as a as a another wedge in the position then um black who is the current world champion magnus carlson uh, resigned it must have upset him a lot because uh twice he missed wins so if you looked at that game afterwards he would have been very upset so anyway what we'll do is we'll clear this board We'll clear this board, reset that board. Okay, we just reset that board now. Uh, leave that page. And we're going to have a look at, we're going to go back into the analysis room again. But uh, what we're going to do this time is when we go in there, we're going to have another look at another game of the great yarn Nepomniachi. Okay. All right then. So this time we're going to go to the 2000, we're going to go to the next year, 2003. At this time it's the under 14 World Championship. And Nepo is white again. Uh, yarn Nepomniachi. He's white again against Carlson. This time it's a Sicilian Alapin variation. Okay. So this is in their youth. All right. So, Jan's got the psychological wood on him. But we're going to give it to um, uh, to Carlson. He was black in both games. Fair enough. Right? So, uh, and later on, when uh, Carlson was on the road to his world championship, his world championship, uh, he turned the tables a bit, right? He turned the tables on those games from his youth against Nippon Niachi, and he had a few fine wins. Okay. But we're going to go back. We're going to go back to 2003. And we're going to look at this game. E4. Nepo plays E4. C5. C3. D5. E takes D. Queen takes D5. And the bar on the side board says equal. We'll have a D4 move in there. And now G6. Just trying to get the uh, the game open, right? Okay, so g6 is played. Knight f3. Just hold the center. Bishop g7. Just put a bit of pressure on the center. And now this move. Knight a3. And in a lot of variations, the whole idea is to play knight to b5, threatening a check, so you can recapture here if the pawn's captured, right? So that's the idea behind it, okay? Now he takes it. I think this is a very bad idea to take this pawn. Very bad idea. I learned this in my beginner chess classes. I would have told my grasshoppers, don't take that pawn in this position and neglect your development, right? Because of the knight to b4 move. Okay, let's have a look at what happens. Okay, Bishop c4, he hits the queen. It gives him a check. And now, what does Jan do here in this position? Think about it for a few seconds, folks. What would you play and why did he allow the check when this pawn is obviously threatening to take this pawn? What has he got? Well, this is what he's got. Bishop e3. Now, if you take that bishop, pawn takes bishop, bishop here will take your pawn with check. Now, if you move take with your king, the knight will then check the king and take the queen. Do you see that? Again, this is what would happen. Bishop takes pawn check, king takes, and then knight would check and take the queen. Okay, 
And you can't stop it with playing king f8. You might think, oh, but I can get out. I, if I take this pawn, this bishop, I can still play king here. Well, you can't because after bishop takes pawn check, if you move king here, the queen would be clear to check you on d8 and the knight would still check you on g5 and still take your queen. So what a brilliant little setup. And that'll teach you to ignore your development, Mr. Carlson. Knight to h6. So he says, well, I better get my pieces out. Yes, you better get your pieces out. And now comes knight to b5. And Nepo says, well, come on. Come on, show me your best. You can't take my bishop. It's impregnable. I'm developing all my pieces, buddy. This is what he's saying to Magnus when he, when he makes this move. And Magnus, yes, Magnus can't take the bishop because if you take the bishop, the knight will check. Your king has to go here and then the queen would announce checkmate on the back ring. Okay. So knight b5, so black castles and says, well, I'm threatening your bishop. You're going to do something. So he says, well, all right, you can threaten my bishop. I'm taking with the pawn. I've got full development. All my minor pieces are working. And your knight's still sitting in its box down here on the original square. So Carson says, well, I'm not sitting in my box. And he comes out here. And it's an awful looking move. It's a horrible looking move. And the engine's saying on the board, on the side, side of the board, the bar is showing that white's got a better go. Okay, that looks like a horrible move. Knight c6. Okay, knight c6 looks terrible. Okay, so knight c3 is played. And he puts his knight back. His knight's supposed to go on f3 and c3 in the normal course of the chess game. Queen c6. Now what have we got here? We've got one knight here on the side of the board. Another knight here on the side of the board. Admittedly, this knight has got the prospects of going here, which is a, a very good square to attack the d pawn. So this, this knight's not too bad, but this knight over here, it's, it's a shame. It's a crying shame to put your knight on the side of the board. Sorry, Magnus. That's the master's opinion from Australia. Queen to b3. Aha, Jan says, well, I'm going to put pressure on your white squares because I think your white squares are basically a bit piss weak. Queen to b6. He says, I, I can't afford not to uh, let this, I've got to stop with all the pressure. All the pressure, the pressure's getting to me. And he says, well, obviously you're suffering from fatigue and pressure because you've just doubled your pawns, buddy. That's what, that's what he's saying. Nepo's saying, Magnus, you've just doubled your pawns. It's not consistent with playing good chess. And then he says, well, I'm going to attack your pawn. Well, surely he could have played knight d5 and attacked the pawn anyway. But now he plays knight a4. Knight goes to d6. Oops. Knight goes to d6. Knight goes to d6. Oh. Well, that's why he couldn't do it. This knight has gone here. Oh, I've got the move order wrong. So we'll go back. We'll just go back a few moves. Okay, so queen e5. Queen, queen's on e5. We'll go back to queen e5 check. Ah, here we go. Queen e5 check, bishop e3. Bishop e3. Knight to h6. Knight to b5. Castles, C takes D4, there it is, Knight to A6, that terrible looking move, Knight to, to, uh, Knight to A6, Knight to C3, chasing the Queen, Queen to C6, Queen to B3, and now Knight to F5. That's better. That's better, butter. At least it's attacking the uh, black squared bishop and trying to fight for a few black squares. Though you're very weak on the white squares, right? So white castles. This is okay. 
And he says, Queen to b6. Oh, I don't like this move. Queen to b6. So he takes it off and he recaptures. And he plays knight to a4. Because yeah, knight here doesn't threaten that because there's a knight here, right? So knight to a4. Knight goes back to d6. And he says, I'm on you, bishop. And he says, well, okay, well, I'll move it. Should b3. And the knight goes to b4. He, he could have played pawn to b4, but now he plays knight to b4. And you think, well, what did he do that for? So the pawn, the knight takes the pawn off. And he plays rook a6. He's, a, he's got a plan. His plan is to occupy the, uh, the different squares, the white squares, and get some counterplay. So knight goes to d5. And he says, well, okay, we'll take your knight. The bishop retakes. And he plays bishop f5. He says, I've got another one coming in on the white squares. But really, it looks terrible. The whole position looks terrible. Magnus has lost the plot. Because it, look at these pawns here. That, that, this is a lovely pawn set up on the queen side. So rook on the f file to c1. Well, he grabs the open file. Why not? That's that's what chess is all about. I tell my grasshoppers that. Rook a5. It looks like a slight improvement in the position. And the bishop goes to b3. Bishop e4. And now we, we suddenly start seeing a slight turn, just a slight turn in the position. Because we know that if that knight gets uh, removed, then this knight's going to be very powerful on f5. So the knight maneuvers away. Nepo likes to do this. I saw that in one of his games of the candidates, the same sort of idea. So the bishop goes back to c6. Now we've got some technical problems with uh, white being able to force his way. I like knight c4 here. Knight to d2, bishop c6, bishop c2. Oh, he, he played bishop here. I like knight c4. suppose it's harder to, to work a win that way. He's probably worried about e5. Knight takes knight, bishop takes knight, or rook takes knight, then bishop e5. Yeah. Oh, e5. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, he plays bishop, uh, bishop c2. Rook goes to d8. And now bishop d3. He's obviously uh, just maneuvering around. Rook goes to d5. I don't know what that's for. Didn't like that one. Knight goes to f3. Now the rook goes over here. Threatening bishop takes knight, obviously. It's not rocket science. So what happens then? Now we have a problem. Bishop goes to e2. Rook goes to d5. A bit of maneuvering around here. And now at last, a4. He says, I'm going to push my pawns. He says, I'm going to push my pawns. He says, I've got an extra one, he says. I've got an extra pawn. Maybe they're trying to reach a time control or something like that. Might have used up a bit of time. We, I'm not familiar about what the time controls were here. So he played uh, um, a4. Oops, no, he didn't. He played g4 to stop knight here. Get your moves right, Johnny. Then he played knight to b5. Then he played bishop c4 and chased his rook. Yeah, the whole idea of this pawn here is it controls that square and that square, and the rook can't move around on that uh, rank, so it's got to go backwards. So he played rook on the f file, uh, rook on the uh, on 5 to d6. So that's what he's done. He's had to go backwards. Now the knights come in, and now the knight's on this bishop. Right, putting more pressure on, and the bishop is now attacking the pawn with check. So he played e6 to, to, to save the f7 pawn, and now 
Jan plays bishop takes knight, bishop takes bishop, recaptures, and then he plays a4 with uh, saying, hey, watch my pawns on the queen side, one of them might queen. Because pass pawns should be rook pushed. There's another rule in endings, and that is the rook should be behind pass pawns. Now white's just got the miniature edge, bishop e8, because the two bishops in open positions are usually stronger. But that's why the knight's sitting on e, e5, to try to stop the two bishops from being raking bishops and having their own way in the game. So before you can get active, Mr. Black, we're coming forwards, b4. So then he plays rook takes d4, and he says, oh, I like this, because if you take my rook, I recapture, and now I'm threatening rook takes pawn over here, I'm threatening bishop takes knight here, and rook takes pawn check here. So I've got a whole lot of threats. Well, let's see what Jan does here, All right? He plays rook c8, move one. Now there won't be any rook takes pawn because a rook takes bishop check. So then now the king has to come over. <clears throat> so then he plays rook e1 and he says, well, now there won't be any bishop takes knight and rook takes pawn check because I've got that covered too. So Carlson says, well, that's one pawn you haven't got. It's gone. And now I think this is where a mistake might have occurred. If we go back, oh, I think perhaps f6, I don't know whether it's playable or not, but it seems to me very, very important that we, we take the g pawn. Right? Oh, white would be winning after that move. Well, where's white's win? Oh, knight takes pawn check and rook takes pawn wins. I see. Uh, that's why he couldn't do it. Magnus, I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, hats off to the uh, super grandmasters here. Okay, so you can't play f6. So Magnus played rook takes pawn. H3 is played, protects the g pawn. And rook takes a4. Now we have a position where we've got the exchange for white, but black got seems to have adequate compensation as long as he can keep his pieces in a safe area. Oh, it looks like bishop takes knight would be a simple draw. If black wanted to draw, he could simply play bishop takes knight. That should be a draw, okay? But does he want to draw? No, nope, I think he wants to win. King to e7. Uh, rook to e1. Rook takes b4. h3, rook takes a4. Knight to c4. And now king e7. Rook to d1. Cuts the king off. Very important. Cuts the king off. And now rook, rook takes c4, he took it. Rook takes c4. And now Magnus has got the two bishops. He says, all right, I'll win with the two bishops, buddy. I doubt whether you'll win this with the two bishops, Magnus. But he'll try anything for a fight. He says, well, I don't think I can lose. I've got five pawns and you've only got three. And I've got two bishops on an open board. Bobby Fisher used to like to have the two bishops. Yeah, so. Now let's see what, what was played. F4. My God, he weakens his pawns. F5. King F2. I'm going to support my pawns, he says. If takes g4, he says, I'm going to get, rip off all the pawns. And he says, all right, I'm going for a queen. What are you going to do about that? Well, if you push past, uh, it's very, very, very difficult to do much with the, uh, the bishops. 
So he doesn't do that. He actually takes it off. But H5, G takes H5, and G takes H5. Now, Rook to C5 is played, just simply threatening the pawn. And now you start pushing it. I'll go for a queen. Then he goes over here and he says, Oh, bad luck, buddy. You can't do that. Otherwise, we'll take it off. And he says, Well, Bishop F6, I can hold it. And he says, Oh, yeah, but what about the check? He says, Your king's in a mess. So he goes to F8. And now Rook to D6. You're just threatening that pawn. We're also threatening pawn here. So I can play pawn here in that position, and then you wouldn't be able to take the pawn because the rook takes bishop. So this rook is very, very much a pain in the butt, and it's not easy. Bishop e4 is played. Now if rook takes pawn, Bishop takes rook. The rook is threatened, right? So you can't take a pawn with the rook because the, the other rook's threatened. Rook c7. Look at these two rooks here. There's a checkmate there. That bishop's not there. You've got to watch that. So bishop d5, he plays king to e3, he's bringing his king into the game, it's very important. And king to e8, and then rook to h7, he's attacking that weak pawn again. And the bishop goes to e7, he says, well, what are you going to do here? And he says, well, I'm going to take your bishop. And he takes back with the pawn, and then the final nail in the coffin, the fighting king, king to d4. Bishop d6, and now push the pawn. And it's this pawn here, this white pawn, that will win the game, right? And they both recognise that this is a winning game for white with the king on the back rank, and the h pawn is going nowhere, and the other pawn can be collected at will. You can't, have, you can't defend both pawns on both sides of the board and deal with a king that's going to go in here, in here, over to here, support the pawn with a checkmate, and checkmate you on the back, right? So that is where the game ended after f5. And now we have two games now where Jan has defeated the great Magnus Carlsen. And guess what? We have another one. This time we're moving to the year 2017. And we're at the London Classic. So it's December 10, 2017 at the London Classic, round eight, and we're going to have a Zucker Tort opening, something different. Uh, Zucker Tort Sicilian variation, okay? And let's have a look at what happens here. In this particular case, positions are reversed. Jan Nepomniachi has got the black pieces, and Magnus Carlsen has the opportunity to defeat Yarn using the white pieces. So let's see what takes place. We'll see what takes place. We'll go right back. And whoops, whoopie doos. We're going back into here. I'm just getting out of it so I can go back into it. You go out so you can go back in. And I'm back. Okay, and here we go. We open up. Carlson plays knight to f3. c5 by Nepo. c3, d5. Now, all these games are, don't forget, they're in the psychological building blocks of these, 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 these players' minds. And what's happened in the past is a reflection of the future. So who will win the 2021 
World Chess Championship. Who's going to win? Right. D4. C takes D. C takes D. Knight C6. Knight C3. So we're moved out of Europe. I suppose we're London still Europe, isn't it? And we're at the London Classic. Knight to C3. Knight to F6. We have like a uh, Slav defense modern exchange variation. Bishop to F4 is played. And now not unusual move. It's played often in these variations where there's a, a, a uh, English type opening. Um, the, the, the white bishop is very powerful. And so black elects to chase the bishop away. Right? So that uh, the bishop can come here, it can go in here. Uh, let's see what happens. Bishop actually retreats to d2. Well, I hate to say it, but Magnus, if you're going to start playing chess and you want to win with the white pieces, you don't retreat your pieces and block them all in like that. You don't, just don't do it. So the knight goes back to f6. Well, we know that you can just bring it back out again and have a draw, but you like to play e3. But you block your bishop in. I tell my grasshoppers, I say, grasshoppers, I say, don't you ever block a bishop in like that. Now here we have Magnus Carlsen blocking his bishop in. Well, I don't care who he is. I don't care whether it's Botvinnik or Tal, who it is. You don't block your bishop in and make it look like a stupid pawn. You just don't do it, right? We don't do it. I don't do it. I tell my students, don't do this, right? I don't care if it's Magnus Carlsen. You don't play moves like that. Now, e6 is played. Okay. That's just a safe, solid move by Jan. He wants to develop his bishop and then castle. He's not asking much. And certainly white's not giving much either. Bishop d3. So he gets his bishop on d6. A logical square. And now e4 is played. Ah, Magnus has decided my bishop here looks stupid. Just like Johnny Curtis says. So now I want to open it up again. I won't go away, Jan. I'm not going away. I'm going to be in your face. That's what he's saying. But he's giving himself the isolated d-pawn. So he, firstly, he moves his bishop back and blocks it up. Then he gives it himself the isolated d-pawn. But sometimes the isolated d-pawn can be strong. So it's all, all up to Magnus' analysis as to whether it's a strong isolated pawn or a weak one. So Jan says, well, I'll take the pawn. I'll, I'll be in that. And then knight takes e4. And now he just retreat his bishop back to e7 and says, well, great. I'm happy you've got an isolated d-pawn. And you're right, Jan, you're right. He's been fiddling around. He's moves his bishop to g5 and he moves his bishop to d2. He blocks it in with e3. His bishop looks terrible. Johnny Curtis tells him that his bishop looks terrible. Magnus Carlsen, your bishop looks absolutely shocking. And now you've got an isolated d-pawn. Not the way to play chess. So there you go. So now, I like the classical way in yarn play. So a bit of a, a bit of a, um, a fait accompli that um, it's the London classic and yarn is playing classical chess. So I'm not biased. I like Magnus Carlsen. I think he's absolutely wonderful. So um, I, I like both players. I want to see the best chess from both players. Bishop e7, uh, right, and now white castles, correctly, and black castles. Now queen c2 is played. Strong move, simply threatens knight takes knight check, and bishop takes pawn check. So it's just a simple developing move, and he says, well, yeah, you can take the isolated d-pawn, however, you will suffer the consequences. So Jan says, all right, then well, I'll just play here and I'll take the pawn next move because you're only going to get a check. The check never killed anybody. And Magnus says, well, maybe rook on the A file to D1 will kill somebody. 
He says, because it's a hidden attack there, because I've got knight takes knight, check. Bishop takes bishop, bishop checks, king's corner. Bishop thumps your queen, and bishop takes bishop, and your king's destroyed. Or maybe bishop b4, and you're totally stuffed. I don't know. But anyway, <laughs> Jan says, I'm not having any of your rubbish, buddy. I'm just going to get my pieces working. And he's right. He's right. He's right. He's finally got all his minor pieces on the best possible squares. And now, preventative move. Um, Magnus doesn't like the knight going here with the idea of flipping back there to d5. Right? So the rook goes to c8. He says, well, right, that's attacking your queen, buddy. I'm threatening knight takes pawn. What are you going to do about that? So he says, well, I'll just jump back here and uh, pin, pin my knight against my queen. And I'm thinking to myself, Magnus, Magnus, Magnus. Give yourself three slaps, Magnus. I don't think you're doing it the right way. Anyway, a6 is played. Queen c1. Queen c1. Oh, where's he going now? He says, I might take that pawn off over there. Are you worried about that? He says, no, I'm not worried about that. Are you worried about that? He says, no, I'm not worried about that. I'll grab the E file. So it doesn't do much. It doesn't do much at all, actually. So he says, well, I'm going to bring my bishop back and that will protect the H-pawn anyway. So that's the end of your attack. But do you notice, Magnus, you've still got an isolated D-pawn. It hasn't gone away. And Magnus says, well, yeah, I've got an isolated d point. I might bring my bishop up to f4, back to an English-type opening, where maybe I can just play bishop e5 and the position might peter out to a draw or something. And now, b5, he says, no, you're not. I'm going to expand on the queen side. I've got a bishop coming down here. I've got another bishop coming down here. And I've got knights flying around here and rooks coming down here. So yes, I've got a lot of innate pressure on the queen side. So b5 is correct. And now, queen to d2, a quiet move. He wants to finally get his queen off the stupid pin that he put himself under. And now, b4, Jan says, I'm not mucking around with you, buddy. You've got an isolated d-pawn. And you're playing nonsense, right? So he takes the pawn off, and the knight takes the pawn. So knight e5 is played, and now knight takes d3. Queen takes d3, and a5. Okay, so what's happening here? Well, the queen goes to a, a solid square and prepares to get rid of that isolated pawn, that weakness. So bishop b4 is played and says, well, okay, I'm on your knight. I'm threatening that. So if you push the pawn forwards, I can just take all that several times. And then you've got to be careful of pins and counter pins and nonsense. So he plays rook e3 and protects his knight. And now bishop c3 is played. Bang. And the pawn recaptures. Bang. Bishop a4 is played. So he attacks the rook. And now I have a look at these white squares here. These, these two white squares. They are super critical. Right in chess. And there's also the possibility of the bishop coming here connecting with the pawn here and having a passed pawn. So you have to be very careful of a move like bishop a4. So he plays rook to a1, and he says, go away, go away. And white's got a slight little edge, nothing to, nothing much. Bishop c2 is played. He wants to play pawn here possibly and link up with his bishop. Okay. So h3 is played. And now... Bang, he changes direction. He goes bishop f5. And he says, well, I'm going over there. What are you going to do about that? And he says, well, I'll chase you. Go away. So he says, all right, I'll go back here. And I think that in this position, 
what what he's been doing with these bishop moves is he's just trying to uh, confuse Magnus and to get him to play weaknesses, to overextend himself on the king's side. And at, uh, at the slightest little mistake, this big knight's going to come in here with a big knight to d5 and, and Hulk smash. So bishop h7, c4 is played. Now, I, I, I really do think that in this position, uh, Nepo's starting to, to get a plan together. A plan. Knight to d7. Now, knight to c6. This looks like a good move, right? By Yang. And queen to f6. Okay. Now, this is where um, knight takes pawn is played. Knight to a5, and now knight to b6. Right? Now he, he thinks he's going to pick up either the d pawn, right? Queen takes pawn, queen takes d pawn, or the c pawn. Okay. So what, what, what happens here? What actually happens? Well, I'll tell you what happens. Jan sets a trap for Carlson. He sets a trap. And this is what he plays. He plays, push the pawn on the horsey. And Carlson says, you can't do that. Didn't you see rook takes pawn? And if your pawn takes back, queen takes rook check. And I'd say that probably just guessing I wasn't there. Put my hand up. I wasn't there, but I, I can imagine... Um, Jan doing the old poker trick and going, oh no, my pawn! Or the old uh, Eric Rosen trick, oh no, my pawn! And then Carlson says, well, I'm going to do the old Carlson trick. I'm going to take the pawn. And then he might fall into a trap. Let's see what happens. Pawn takes rook. Queen takes rook. Check. King to h2. Okay, and queen to a5. Now, queen to c6 is played. This is the end of the combination because after queen to c6, queen a4 protects the queen. So hold on a minute, you're not going to get the knight. You thought you would go there and attack the rook and get the knight, but you don't. The queen's protecting the queen, and you can't take the rook with check because it's protected, but now the point, you can't take the knight because queen takes bishop check, right? You can't take the knight because you can't take the knight here. You take the knight. The queen will take queen will take the bishop with check. And that's the point of the trap. So Black then played Queen takes a4. He has no choice there really. Knight takes a4 and he's got the pawn. He thinks, well, I'll just try pushing my pawn through. And he plays knight b6, c7, and f6 is played just to kick the bishop out. Rook to b3 to attack the knight, and now knight c8. And now it's impossible. Black's going to play pawn here, and the game is all over. And when this bishop comes out, there'll be two minor pieces and a rook against a rook and a bishop, and he'll choke that little pawn off the board, and that'll be the end of the game. So after rook to b3, knight to uh, c8, that was when Magnus Carlsen resigned for the third game in my series, okay? And what I, I've learned by going back into the psychology of these two players is that Magnus is still susceptible to a blind spot that uh, Nebuchadnezzar is totally classical Though he plays brilliant chess, he still 
totally classical, and he, he, he doesn't make many mistakes. He's ready for this world title, and uh, Magnus will have to play uh, like the world champion that he is, and uh, he won't be able to experiment. He won't be able to do um, uh, some of the finer end game little tracks and traps and tri tricks that he does against some of the other Super Grandmasters. This guy will see everything. It'll be just like him playing himself, actually. A worse variation of himself because this, this guy, Nippon Niachi, in my mind, just researching his games he, and watching his games in the candidates, he's the ultimate player. The ultimate player. So it's ultimate player versus ultimate player because we know Magnus Carlsen is the ultimate player as well. So I hope you enjoyed this. It gives you an insight into someone who may be the new world chess champion. But we have to sit back and we twiddle our thumbs and wait until... The final move is made. Thank you. Don't forget, <coughs> excuse me, uh, please uh, don't hesitate to subscribe to my channel <coughs> if you like my stuff. And uh, to support my channel, the links are there so you can make a donation uh, by PayPal or whatever. And uh, any uh, contributions you make are most appreciated because it helps me keep my channel open and helps me giving you this material. Thank you for now, and God bless you all. Um, I'm going to stop recording now, and I am on Twitch Live, so you can check me out on FM John Curtis Chess on Twitch as well. Thank you again, and goodbye for now.